Zen Kutsudachi is our front stance. So after we bow and then yoi, often we move forward into Zen Kutsudachi. Stepping forward, <coughs> get Ambarai downward block. And now we're in Zen Kutsudachi. Literally, front stance, or fr making sure the front knee is bent. For this stance, we need to have it long. So from the side angle, you can see it's a long stance. And also, we must have some width in our stance. And the width of our stance should be about our shoulder width. The front foot, the outside of the front foot is pointing straight forwards, not this way. This would mean this knee could collapse inwards very easily. By pointing the outside of the foot straight forwards and bending the knee so it is directly over the middle of the foot, this gives us a strong position for our knee and foot position ready for when we step forward into our next Zenku Sadachi. The back foot, a common mistake as people, beginner students that you see is they have the back foot sideways, like this. By doing this, this hip cannot come forward. It's locked back here because this foot does not allow our back knee to twist. So by turning the foot in, just that little movement there now allows this hip to come forward. For example, when we're punching, reverse punch. That foot movement is crucial because it allows some flex in the knee, called tame in Japanese, or spring, to straighten out and let this hip movement come forward. So the, the rear foot is probably a, at about a 45 degree angle or less. Definitely not a 90 degree angle this way. This would be a mistake and would not be very good for your knees. So once again, you have the outside of your foot straight forward. The knee is bent directly over the front foot. And then the back foot is at a 45 degree angle or less, allowing your hip movement to come in and out. If I were to drop my knee to the floor, just to check your length, an easy test is to drop your knee directly to the floor and then place one, two, or at most three fists straight from your knee forward. And then you should be in line with the heel of your front foot. This is a good test to see if your stance is the correct length. And the width, as I say, is your shoulder width. So you're looking at about 12 to 18 inches width, probably for an adult, a little bit less for a, for a child, of course. And then straight up from there, and now you're in your front stance. So this stance is called Zen Kutsudachi. Weight distribution is approximately 60% on the front leg and 40% on the back leg. This varies depending on your height, depending on how long your legs are compared to your upper body. Of course, it's, it's different per person, but a good guide is about 60% to 40%. Zen Kutsudachi. The next stance is called Kokutsudachi. Kokutsudachi is your back stance. So back stance, now our feet are in a straight line. Once again, the outside of the front foot is pointing straight forward. But if you were to draw a straight line from the inside of your foot all the way down to the heel of the back foot, this should be straight. This time, the back foot is sideways because the knee must bend outwards over the back foot. Front knee is also bent this time. In our front stance, the back leg's straight. In back stance, both knees are bent, only with the back leg bent more. Weight distribution for this stance, again, varying depending on your height is approximately 70% to 30%. So a little bit more bend towards the back leg for back stance. Back stance is generally a defensive stance to try and keep your body away from your opponent, maybe blocking knife hand block, for example. And then it allows you to transition forward to a punch or a spear hand strike or something like this. It allows you to transition forward into back stance. Just by keeping your knees bent this way, it creates more, more body space between you and your opponent. Front stance, obviously, you're much closer to your opponent with your body. So this is a very, very useful stance and very popular stance in Shotokan Karate. It also, in Kata, looks like a very nice stance, too. So it's important that you have your knees bent. If your knees are straight like this, this is very sloppy. So it must, you must keep your knees bent. This builds your leg strength and also makes you look much nicer. 
from the front angle again. Body upright and straight. Straight line with the inside of the front foot to the heel from the side angle. Your weight is slightly back here. This would be the middle here, 50. 50, 50, right in the center, or back here. So about 70, 30. Keeping back straight and focus forward. This is Kokutsudachi, back stance. The next important stance at this level is called Kibadachi. Kibadachi is your horse riding stance. This stance is found in many, many different styles of karate and generally is performed in the same way. One of the consistencies throughout the martial arts is your horse riding stance or your kibadachi stance. Kibadachi stance is obviously 50-50 weight distribution. Again, the outside of the feet would go in, a, in parallel lines straight forward. Whereas if you drew a line from the inside of your feet, they would actually meet at some point in the distance, making a triangle. But the outside of the feet are parallel. The reason for this is to one, to help you grip the floor with your feet to provide stability, and two, to allow your knees to bend outwards. This is an outside tension stance. In karate, the outside tension stances and inside tension stances. Kibadachi is one such outside tension stance. Your back should be straight, your weight directly over the center. If you were to draw a straight line from the crown of your head down your spine, it would come straight out under here and should meet in the middle between your feet. If you're leaning forward, that's not going to happen, of course. Likewise, if you lean back. Stances like this, obviously, is not 50-50, so this is no longer a horse riding stance. Horse riding stance, very straightforward, just 50-50 weight distribution outside of the, of the feet, pointing straight forward, and then sit. The, uh, the hardest part of this stance, is, of course, is to keep your knees bent. And people, after a while, gradually start straightening up, and then you can see already, this doesn't look very good. And obviously, as, as the instructor, this is very easy to see in our students because they, they stand up. The ones who keep down like this are always going to have a good, strong stance because they're developing the leg muscles in the thighs and the calf area. And then they, they're developing good posture, which will, of course, help them in the future as they get older. Because naturally, as we get older, our posture gradually diminishes. So through karate practice, we can maintain good posture even as we're getting into our 60s and 70s and above. And my sensei, Kanazawa sensei, is, uh, as of the filming of this DVD, 75 years old and still has great posture from all of his karate training. So Kibadachi is very, very good, strong stance. Very strong sideways. Forward and backwards, this would be the weakness of this stance. Someone pushes here difficult to keep balance, but the purpose of kibadachi is to be strong sideways. <laughs>